il senso religioso o l'esperienza religiosa è innanzitutto un fatto, un fenomeno obiettivo, un fatto reale, non è un'idea, innanzitutto non è un modo di sentire, non solo si tratta di un fatto, di un avvenimento, ma del fatto più imponente e più inestirpabile della storia dell'uomo. Più imponente, più vasto, che neanche il fenomeno dell'amore dell'uomo e della donna, che neanche il fenomeno del rapporto tra genitori e figli, perché il senso religioso è un avvenimento che pone, che afferma o che ricerca l'orizzonte entro il quale acquisti senso anche il rapporto tra l'uomo e la donna, anche il rapporto tra genitori e figli. Perciò è più vasto, perfino di quelli. Quello che ti serve, quando ti serve. Come il piano Easy Smart a canone zero, anziché a 3,90 euro al mese. Easy Bank, semplicemente banca. In Lombardia c'è tanto da scoprire. Vai su illombardia.it e scoprila tutta.
ha l'energia giusta, sceglie di non sprecarla. Quello che ti serve quando ti serve. Nasce Easy Bank, la nuova banca digitale di Intesa San Paolo. Easy Bank, semplicemente banca. Il senso religioso o l'esperienza religiosa è innanzitutto un fatto, un fenomeno obiettivo, un fatto reale. Non è un'idea, innanzitutto non è un modo di sentire. Non solo si tratta di un fatto, di un avvenimento, ma del fatto più imponente e più inestirpabile della storia dell'uomo. Più imponente, più vasto, che neanche il fenomeno dell'amore dell'uomo e della donna che neanche il fenomeno del rapporto tra genitori e figli perché il senso religioso è un avvenimento che pone che afferma o che ricerca l'orizzonte entro il quale acquisti senso anche il rapporto tra l'uomo e la donna anche il rapporto tra genitori e figli Perciò è più vasto, perfino di quelli. Quello che ti serve, quando ti serve. Come il piano Easy Smart a canone zero, anziché a 3,90 euro al mese. Easy Bank, semplicemente banca. In Lombardia c'è tanto da scoprire. Vai su illombardia.it e scoprila tutta. Vi abbiamo visto cambiare e siamo cambiati insieme a voi. E anche quest'estate sarà come tutte le altre. C'eravamo quando vi siete incontrati per la prima volta. Vi abbiamo visto gioire, tuffarvi, sognare grandi imprese e apprezzare piccole cose. C'eravamo e ci saremo, oggi come allora. Perché una cosa non cambierà mai, la Romagna. 
è la vacanza degli italiani. l'energia giusta, sceglie di non sprecarla. serve quando ti serve. Nasce Easy Bank, la nuova banca digitale di Intesa San Paolo. Easy Bank, semplicemente banca. civiltà dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo.
Allora, l'esistenza umana è una Human existence is an inexhaustible friendship. Welcome back to this uh, new session at the uh, uh, Rimini meeting. Welcome to all of you. Uh, this has become uh, uh, a, a common session for the meeting. Uh, the title is What Form of State and What Form of Regions? Uh, for the past three or four years, uh, with the same distinguished guests, uh, uh, we are talking about what steps ahead have been made uh, on a, a topic uh, which is certainly very important for our country and not only. So um, uh, the regions are increasingly asking for uh, greater powers. This has triggered uh, a, a very wide debate uh, with different perspectives. So once again, uh, we will touch upon all the different topics. Certainly, we can talk uh, about uh, the expectations of the new reform and the state of the art. So let's give uh, a, a warm welcome uh, with, to uh, Lorenza Violini, who is professor of constitutional law at the University of Milan, who will give us the context. A welcome to Massimiliano Federiga, President of the Conference of the Regions and of the Friuli Venezia Giulia region. Uh, uh, welcome to uh, Stefano Bonaccini, President of the Emilia Romagna region. Welcome back. And uh, uh, welcome to Attilio Fontana, President of the Lombardy region. So, after this round of presentations, uh, uh, let's talk about the topic. Uh, uh, Professor Violini uh, will give us the uh, context. Uh, we met a few uh, days ago for the first time and uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, technical topics uh, that sometimes are very complicated. Professor Violini can uh, simplify things and for somebody who is working on television, this is extraordinary. Thank you. Thank you very much to the meeting. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Mine is a daunting task, but I'll stick to the five minutes that have been given to me. Is is there anything new uh, on the relation between the state and uh, uh, regions? What state and what regions? Uh, this is a very complicated topic, but uh, I'll give you about uh, the most recent news. Uh, basically, we have a constitutional clause, uh, uh, which is very far-reaching, letter M, uh, a second paragraph, uh, saying that the state, and I'm underlined the state, uh, because sometimes it's a bit confusing, uh, is called upon by constitutions to define the essential levels of social and civil rights that have to be ensured at a standard, with a standard level throughout Italy. This clause has given a lot of problems to constitutionalists because we have to discuss what is essential and what is not essential. I'm not going to dwell upon that. I want to tell you and then I will give the floor to uh, our speakers uh, for the debate uh, who can say I agree uh, that I'm, I'm right or I'm not right. But there is a problem in the relations between uniformity, uh, which is what has to be given uh, by the state, and autonomy, uh, which uh, um, is given to the regions. The regions have been created by the Constitution uh, so that uh, Italy could be more democratic uh, so that there could be uh, regional parliaments uh, elected directly by the people uh, with a lot of uh, uh, legislative uh, functions and not only. So uh, there is a standardization, uniformity and uh, autonomy. What is the line between the two things? Now, this is a topic that we have been discussing for the past 20 years in the most uh, possible consistent way. So the state should define the essential levels of uh, uh, performances. So a commission has been uh, set up this year. This is the commission for the essential levels of uh, performances, which has started to work hard under the leadership of President Cassese uh, by uh, studying the current legislation and the existing legislations to understand uh, where the legislation has already established essential levels. Now we have an autonomous region here and two ordinary regions, but essential levels apply to uh, all different regions throughout Italy. 
In the newspaper, maybe you have seen that uh, there was a harsh debate uh, in the Commission because the topic was uh, what are the topics uh, uh, that should be analyzed by the Commission? Uh, just the topics uh, under Article 316, uh, third paragraph, whereby uh, some uh, regions uh, can ask for more powers, and not just legislative powers, but also administrative powers, so that uh, uh, some regions can ask for some more powers uh, to better uh, administer themselves. And Is there just uh, uh, an implementation of Article 136? Uh, what can regions ask more, not just essential levels, uh, because they have to be defined by the state, but uh, this region can ask for more powers? Or else do we need to talk about the general clause? Uh, here there has been some debate, some of our um, uh, colleagues, lawyers, uh, have said that uh, uh, everything, uh, the debate had to be focused on the whole article. Others have said that uh, the, the, the debate should be more focused on the 10 topics where both regions can ask for more powers. Uh, this has led to a debate. Those who thought that uh, uh, the whole article should be debated uh, in general terms, uh, at some point uh, uh, decided to come out of this commission. They have been replaced and we continue to work. Uh, uh, it was, uh, the work was focused on theory because uh, many uh, laws uh, have been created over the past 20 years establishing uh, essential levels, especially in healthcare, for example, or education, uh, or the protection of work and active policies. Some things uh, are being uh, still established. And then we have all, we've looked at all the different topics. The work is now coming to a conclusion. We are still discussing about the implementation of standardization. Implementation of standardization will also relate to standard needs and standard costs, hence cost assessment. This is the work that has been done in the past few months, and hopefully we will come to an end in September, October, in just a few weeks. And then all the rest will come. Uh, there are uh, commissions that are working on uh, um, economic standards. And in the end, what should we define? Maybe in the end, uh, we could define the basic structure of the welfare state. True, uh, there are many different topics, but here we need to properly understand how a welfare state can be organized. There are also some rules established by law, which are not talking about what services, but uh, there are rules established by legislative decrees and by ministerial decrees establishing some uh, structural elements of the welfare state. For example, we have hospitals and the essential levels uh, try to um, uh, establish some structural elements for health care. The same has been done for education. Uh, employment uh, uh, services uh, uh, also uh, apply to that and in some essential levels have been established. The government is now trying to uh, strengthen employment centers. And then uh, there is also the topic of assistance. Uh, legislation is under the competence of the uh, regions. The municipalities are the uh, implementing uh, agencies. And uh, municipalities are the ones in charge of uh, providing assistance. Even in the context, uh, we could say that uh, uh, there must be standardization. 
it must not be standardization 100 percent otherwise uh, there is no autonomy but uh, the opposite is also true there must be some uh, standardization otherwise uh, autonomy is not possible and cannot be implemented it would be interesting to uh, understand uh, uh, the different uh, topics, uh, like uh, what is the relation between the state and the regions for the National Recovery Plan. And it would also be uh, uh, interesting uh, to uh, talk about another important principle. The meeting uh, talks about this friendship, uh, which is uh, inexhaustible. In legal terms, uh, in the constitutional terms, uh, this friendship uh, is called uh, um, fair cooperation. So the different levels of the government should be able to work together in order to provide citizens with effective services. All these elements uh, uh, could be useful to answer the question, what state and what regions? And here I stop and I will give the floor to the other speakers. Thank you, Professor. Now we have all the elements. Now, let's go for the first round. The principle of fair collaboration, which is the milestone for the system and which is a hot debate now. Now, let's start with President Federica. I wrote down The fact that uh, with uh, uh, different autonomy, we don't want to divide country, but uh, everyone should increase uh, their speed. We all agree on these principles, but how can we get there and what can we do? I'll give you the floor, President. Thank you very much for inviting me here. It's always a pleasure to uh, uh, talk here at the uh, uh, Rimini meeting. Uh, congratulations uh, on your organizations because uh, every year you are improving your organizations. Congratulations. And I want to thank all the volunteers uh, because I think that uh, they are the real strength of the uh, uh, meeting. So let's start from the essential levels of performances. What are they? The performances that the the services, sorry, the services that the state should provide to citizens, according to different autonomies, the different autonomies can be established after the state has decided about what the services are and what the costs are of those services. Hence, different autonomies telling the state, okay, you can give me that power because uh, I can improve services better than the state and I can also optimize resources. So the region with the same resources can not only provide uh, the essential level of services, uh, but also can improve the services. This is uh, 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 the willingness of our political party uh, in favor of uh, different types of autonomy or in different levels of autonomy. But today, there's a, 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 a wrong narration saying that the southern regions are not up to the different levels of autonomy. Each region can uh, ask for more powers in one or more topic in the negotiation with the central government. But I'm convinced that in the south, and I've seen that through the pandemic, some regions can provide better answers than the central government. And I'm saying that because different levels of autonomy cannot be a reason of the clash of the conflict between the regions and the state. But we need to wonder who can better provide the services to the citizens. So either the state or the region, then a choice has to be made. Otherwise, it's just a fight of power between institutions. And this is the failure of the central government, of the municipalities, and of the regions. We have to bear in mind how we can better uh, spend resources to the benefit of the common god. And this is why we talk about the different levels of autonomy. Very quickly, 
we are now in the debate. Oh, are all the regions potentially ready for different levels of autonomy? It's called different levels of autonomy because each region can ask what it is ready for and can bring its added value. It's not that all the regions are given the same powers, but I remind you that uh, when we say that the different levels of autonomy can be to the detriment of some regions, uh, this is not true. I'm just saying that because in the worst case scenario, uh, the situation remains the same as it is today. But in the best case scenario, we can optimize resources and the use of resources. Today, there is a difference between the north and the south of the country. but. This is not due to the different levels of autonomy, and this is due to the central government, the fact that everything is centralized in the central government. President Bonaccini, uh, you have already talked about autonomy with five different governments. Together with uh, uh, Roberto Maroni, who may give a round of applause, and I send my greetings, uh, and together with Luca Zaia, Attilio was not yet president. In early 2017, uh, President Gentiloni was uh, coming to the end of his mandate. At that time, uh, we signed a pre-memorandum of understanding because that government was coming to the end, and we didn't want to waste the work done for one year with the regions between the regions and the central government uh, to understand uh, how we could have uh, access to the different levels of autonomy. So we had to work with many different governments. There was Gentiloni, uh, uh, then there was uh, government Conti number one, then government Conti number two, then Draghi, and now there is uh, Meloni. Before uh, Massimiliano, uh, for almost six years, uh, I was uh, the president of the Conference of the Regions. And in less than six years, we had to work with five different governments. And uh, this is uh, uh, something strange, and this is typical uh, of Italy. And this is uh, one of the problems of our country, because if there's just uh, uh, one government for one or two years, it's very difficult to bring results, to achieve results. I thank uh, uh, Federica uh, uh, because uh, the meeting uh, um, is very important this year because uh, this meeting is organized after this uh, flooding that uh, was an enormous disaster for Emilia Romagna. It, uh, the flooding in Emilia Romagna is among the first, uh, the top three. Uh, uh, massacres uh, uh, of this year, together with uh, the terrible uh, earthquake of Turkey and Syria. We are among those major massacres happening these years. Eleven years ago, uh, two earthquakes uh, uh, caused the two billion euros of damage. Now we want to rebuild everything in Romania. We have a lot of flaws. Uh, but there is uh, 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 one big virtue that we always roll up our sleeves and we never complain. Even the people from uh, 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 Romania, you have seen them in the videos uh, crying, uh, getting desperate, but the next day uh, they were uh, singing Romagna Mia, uh, uh, working uh, to uh, save their lands. So Romagna is not just ours, it's a major heritage of the country, and we have to help Romagna. I was one among the first three people to uh, try and promote uh, 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 autonomy. Uh, we were uh, asking for more powers for 50% of the topics. I was not interested in the uh, uh, tax residues. Uh, Fontana was not there. During the two referendums, we were saying, uh, that uh, uh, we would keep uh, nine-tenths of the taxes for us. Uh, that was a sort of succession, not autonomy. No one can do that. Uh, 
I was not interested in having more money compared to what we had before. I've always said that if we're given less money, but we're given more powers on some topics, on some issues, we could spend money better than they spend the money in Rome from the central government. But I was interested in an autonomy, uh, which is based on two principles. First, planning. Any local authority in Italy, be it a region or be it a, prov a province or a municipality, doesn't know how much money they're going to have the next year. Because if we don't know how much money we can have the next year, it is very difficult to imagine investments or the spending for the next year. Second, I wanted to reduce red tape bureaucracy for infrastructures, for example, we, uh, 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 our region, wanted to have the power to provide an environmental impact assessment for those infrastructures which have nothing to do with the central government. For example, the uh, um, a bypass in Reggio Emilia, uh, which uh, opened a few uh, years ago. It's the beltway uh, around Reggio Emilia. And, uh, uh, it, it took many years in order to have an environmental impact assessment from the central government, but for us, uh, it would be uh, easy to give an environmental impact assessment just in six months. So time is money. We imagine to have an autonomy which could uh, ensure more freedom and more ability to intervene, because this is very important in Italy where there is a lot of bureaucracy. This is why I don't agree on Calderoli's proposals or on some parts of it. First, at some point, uh, together with Boccia, the Minister for Regional Affairs, uh, at the conference of the uh, regions, uh, together there is no agreement with the municipalities or, uh, or provinces, but in the conference of the regions, we uh, submitted a proposal saying, uh, that uh, the essential level of services must be established before the law. An objection could be raised. All the parliaments uh, never talked about that. But uh, this is not the excuse not to do that. We should wonder and we should ask ourselves, uh, why the regions of the South have never asked for differentiated autonomy. At some point, they were all governed by the center-left. Now, uh, most of them are governed by center-right. When we talked to Caderoli in the Conference of the Regions, many presidents of southern regions were very worried, because the point is, if uh, you first define the essential level of services. I know what I can expect for the future years, and therefore we can assess uh, what we can do. But uh, there is no framework law approved by the parliament. No one knows, uh, I think, uh, uh, how it works uh, to have differentiated autonomy. This is the way it works. If a region agrees with the government, uh, it must be approved by the two branches of parliament by qualified majority. It means that most parliamentarians are not elected in that region. Even if Lombardy, which is the greatest one, the biggest one in Italy, just has one-sixth of the members of parliament. Just So just imagine the others. And if there is no uh, uh, approval by the parliament, it is almost impossible to have access to differentiated autonomy. I think uh, uh, we are on the wrong track. This is why we need to discuss, uh, because I think that we should rediscuss these issues, which to us are fundamental in the debate. It's true, like Federica was saying, uh, differentiated autonomy uh, has never been uh, approved, has never been used. Uh, but uh, 
Uh, Italy is not a balanced country, and we don't have to increase the imbalances. We have to reduce them. Here, uh, there is a representative of uh, an autonomous region. And it is well governed as a region. But I want to discuss about uh, 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 the other regions or, or the other ordinary and autonomous regions. I think that uh, we should discuss more about the difference between autonomous and non-autonomous regions. President Fontana. Warm thanks uh, for uh, having invited me and for giving me the opportunity to participate in this wonderful meeting, which is unique in Italy and is more and more successful. I was saying that today, in the meeting, you can feel the real uh, feeling of people who believe in something. So thank you for that. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Second. President Bonaccini has touched upon uh, the topic of the essential level of services, uh, saying, in more than 70 years of constitution in Italy, do you know what uh, the essential level of services are? No, no one knows about that, and no one uh, has ever thought about an implementation of the essential level of services in Italy, but uh, this request uh, has uh, been made after the request for autonomy. So we have to thank those who have requested for autonomy on a fundamental principle of the essential level of services, which has started to be debated at the political level, because all the other governments have always said, OK, we have to strike a balance in Italy, which was not the case. But no one has ever talked about the essential level of services. However, some steps ahead have been made on this because there is law 42 uh, applied in 2009, whereas uh, there is uh, a sort of a tax uh, autonomy whereby uh, the different regions uh, can also have uh, an autonomy in terms of taxes. And then there is a law 147 of 2013 uh, approved by uh, government letter, center left, that has accelerated the uh, implementation of uh, autonomy. Also, there is not something I and I don't understand uh, in what Bonaccini said. Why are you saying that you don't like the differentiated autonomy proposed by Calderoli? He proposed a project uh, where regions will get to autonomy sooner or later, and uh, this is a certainly. Uh, this is a, a process where we can better um, understand the relations between the regions and the central government, more detailed and clearer than what was proposed by the left governments in the past. Pressa, the uh, undersecretary of a uh, central left government, said, OK, let's reach an agreement between the government and the regions, and then come to parliament and ask the parliament either to approve the agreement or not. So I believe that uh, Calderoli's proposals is a bill that Uh, has have to focus on some specific aspects and basic aspects. So uh, if you are saying that you don't agree on Calderoli's bill, it means that there's something wrong. Uh, there is something wrong in what Bonaccini said. However, this is a bill that uh, 
is certainly uh, focusing on the approval of parliament and on the respect of a uh, democracy, much more so than the Brussels agreement. However, we need to understand how we can uh, change an agreement. How can uh, Federica uh, change an agreement between uh, me and Bonaccini if uh, I'm not even participating uh, in the debate and I cannot support uh, what uh, my position? In any case, I'm convinced that uh, Calderoli's bill is uh, a perfect one in order to achieve differentiated autonomy. Those who are against it are those that don't want to provide effective answers to their regions. This is not me, this is not Bonaccini, maybe this is something else. Okay, we have come to the end of the first round. Uh, we're gonna have two more rounds before the end. So. After the first round, we can understand that this process is going to be very long and complex. Do you agree on that? Well, I'll just make a remark. As a constitutionalist, I think I have to. So when it comes to laws, well, it is fundamental that the parliament needs to have the power to review and maybe send back the draft, well, the bill to the government, well, and then, uh, I mean, uh, sooner or later, a vote will be needed. And well, as uh, President Bonaccini said, so this uh, law will be voted and a qualified majority will be needed. But when it comes uh, to some uh, constitutional principles, they need to be set forth uh, by law in their general sort of guidelines as the Constitutional Court uh, stated, uh, and the same was for the healthcare sector. So we have a law setting up the basic levels and basic standards, but then you have the decrees of the president of the council of ministers, and then we w would proceed in the same way as we did over the last few years. Very often, uh, well, we have uh, delegate laws and then the government can set up the details. But I personally do not see any constitutionally relevant obstacles in the fact that the basic standard levels that we are identifying and that are already present in the legislation will have to be implemented because the basic standards for the healthcare sector are a thick volume. So, of course, the parliament can't make decisions on this. So, the differentiated autonomy principle I mean, it's not bad at all. So the Calderoli bill defines the pathway to achieve, at the end of the day, through uh, parliamentary law, after the draft analysis, the bill's analysis, after the parliamentary debate, and maybe after a comeback to the government, uh, uh, so trying to respond to parliament's requests. So, if we were to achieve the end of this uh, procedure, the constitutionally, that would be fine. On top of that and upstream, I want to say that if in the meantime, by analyzing carefully the legislation, we would understand that, uh, for instance, the need is about uh, uh, making a further step uh, beyond the sources and maybe create a commission or something similar, that would be reasonable. But first of all, let's look at the reality of our system. Let's see where uh, essential basic standards are already present, where not, and then let's try to move on. So long before autonomy, this is really a matter uh, that uh, has to do with the whole country and the homogeneousness that we need to preserve in the country. And President Federica, as far as the parliament is concerned, well, and we heard that uh, Professor Violini and her colleagues uh, emphasized a couple of risks. So for instance, 
the uh, parliament may become simply an archery. This is one of the risks. Uh, secondly, a, a region-based uh, uh, solidarity model set forth in the constitution could be replaced by a more competition-oriented uh, regional model. Well, first of all, I want to say that uh, a uh, region from the south uh, asked for differentiated autonomy and it's a Campania region and uh, it uh, even wrote a letter time, some time ago to have uh, uh, differentiated autonomy and uh, well, well, the last question I will ask you is the possibility to somehow sort of come up with a conclusion. Well, I think that uh, there's the good faith and good willingness to come to a conclusion regardless of the political party of belonging. So uh, going back to your question, I'll try to be as uh, clear as possible. Honestly, it's my problem, but I do not fully understand these uh, doubts and these concerns. But if today a performance, a service is uh, delivered, and let's imagine that now that uh, service costs 10, well, that 10, well, then it would be obtained by the region and so nothing is taken away from the other sorts of uh, financing sources that also guarantee and cover so state paid services anywhere else. So regardless of the autonomy, I mean those uh, service levels need to be covered. So uh, basic standards, essential levels of services should be, uh, I mean, guaranteed regardless uh, of uh, the payer, may it be the region or the uh, central state. Uh, sometimes uh, the central state could not be able to uh, guarantee those uh, essential level of services. But it is strange if the central state is not able to guarantee these essential level of services, but the, uh, the regions are forced to be able to do that. So why is it so that those essential levy services are, are you know, compulsory only for regions but not for the central state? And so regardless of the payer, I mean, the essential level of services needs to be uh, guaranteed. And the region, the region that is not going to ask for the autonomy on that uh, subject, I mean, uh, will still get uh, that amount of money from the state. So the Calderoli bill is the following. So that amount of 10 can be better spent through the region or the central state. We need to be ideology free. And uh, I mean, it's not a matter of preferring one system instead of the other. So maybe with an autonomy system, with that amount, you can provide better services. If the central state can be a better provider, it's okay. That is why this debate should not be politically oriented, because these essential level of services are about rights of the citizens. So. This is as clear as is the, that, and I hope that, uh, I mean, uh, we will reach a solution, a positive solution. When it comes to the constitutional structure of a country, we should understand that it's not just about the next government, it's about the next uh, decade. So, I mean, uh, what we decide about uh, service provision should not go to the detriment of citizens. And President Bonaccini now and then President Fontana. President Bonaccini. Well, I think that uh, we will meet again here in one year and maybe a solution won't be found. First of all, because the regions from the south, I mean, uh, won't be convinced. Well, the vast majority of them are governed by uh, right-wing parties. Uh, 
and uh, they are not agreeing. So, well, the differentiated autonomy has never been uh, defined through a law, and uh, even uh, the level, uh, the essential levels of services can be reassuring because otherwise the part of the country that is better off could get more at the detriment of those who are not so well positioned. This is the hidden fear of some. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this debate now. And secondly, well, you need the financial provisions and some people resign from the commission because they say the resources won't be there to guarantee what needs to be transferred to those asking for the differentiated autonomy. Isn't that the case? In a few months time, we are going to discuss that again. And believe me, the resources that are needed to cover the Calderoli bill are not there. I'm, I'm sure of that. I'm not saying I believe. I know that. And you will see the beat in a few months' time. And then again, the preliminary remark is wrong. We need a framework law approved by the parliament. And this is what we had reached, not through the Bresa issue at the beginning of 2018, but when, uh, uh, because uh, we had been able to get uh, an agreement uh, thanks to the support of UPI and ANCHI, because uh, we do not have uh, an import stakeholder. The municipalities, Emilia Governor Region, doesn't manage anything. We simply plan. You can ask any mayor in this region. The mayors are the best managers. And of course, uh, when it comes uh, to the healthcare services, well, we need to keep that because you saw what happened during the pandemic. Uh, very often we were asking ourselves uh, if what we had just uh, decided was uh, the best decision or not. So probably we have shown that we are a country that is better of uh, the idea we have of it. So again, there's the risk of uh, a dispute and uh, for some that could be the stage to show to have the power and on the other hand, uh, we may risk to end up in a discussion dividing regions instead of uniting them. And on top of that, and the constitution foresees that unless somebody asks for the differentiated autonomy. Even within the, my party and the center-wing coalition, that's the battle that there has, has always been there. And uh, well, in the past, uh, the left was asking for more emphasis of local autonomies in order to have a better uh, balanced country. When uh, at the beginning of the 70s, there were no kindergarten, no uh, toddler school in the, the country. Well, the decision was made because it was needed. And I think that maybe that was a key step. And so we have showed that also we are among those with the highest number of kindergartens and the highest female employment rate ever. So, well, the two things went hand in hand. So, I'm, I'm, I mean, I think that good government is what makes a difference. But today, I think there is an obstacle. This obstacle should be removed. That's why I suggest to try to get all around the table once again, because otherwise the foreseen shortcut will lead us to a dead end. But again, I'm always open to discussion. I don't like complaining, so I'm ready for discussion even tomorrow morning. But I'm convinced that uh, the current stage of things uh, won't end up in a good situation. So Bonaccini is ready to start negotiations again to find a virtuous and fully shared solution. But, well, 
if we keep going like that, in one year's time, we will still be there. And uh, well, this is going to be a never ending story. And uh, the old Communist Party was in favor of autonomy. This is something I never ever heard. Well, when it comes to constitution, I think that uh, the Christian democracy wanted the setting up of regions and not the Communist Party. But that's part of the past. I don't want to go back to this. And I'm happy to know that today things have changed and uh, the left uh, sort of wing uh, area is in favor of that. But I think that uh, uh, your secretary was more radical, saying no, we cannot even talk about it. I know that you have a different opinion. You can't say it, but I know. The true issue, the real issue, is that the Bocha model that is uh, now being uh, sort of quoted so many times. Uh, and at that time, uh, Minister Boccia uh, explained the system to me, but it was not very different from the Calderoli bill. Actually, it was the same uh, proposal, maybe explained uh, in a more uh, complicated way. And uh, maybe the proposal was uh, too much convoluted, but uh, the, I mean the content essentially was similar, and uh, it went into the same direction. So there was an attempt to increase uh, the involvement of the parliament, and in the Bresta draft, there was no consideration of it apart from uh, the uh, approval. Well, when it comes to my region, Lombardy region, as to the essential levels of service, I'm happy to have them. I've been waiting for them since 2009. I've been asked uh, for their application for such a long time. And I can just have a look at this uh, little analysis uh, made by the state. And I see that the regionalized expenses per, per capita, well, do you know which is the least spending region? It's easy. It's easy. It's a rhetorical question. It's Lombardy region with uh, 3,605 euros, and then you have Veneto region with uh, 3,816, then Emilia-Romagna with uh, 4,010 euros. So, well, if these services are applied or not, it's okay for us because, uh, I mean, uh, we are okay with that. So we would be happy to have uh, the essential levels of service, and we are happy to have a definition of them. So there are no objective reasons to make us think once again about uh, uh, Calderoli minister proposal. He showed us a way, he proposed a way, giving the parliament the opportunity to intervene uh, just in case and leading us to the end of this procedure. The rest uh, is something that should have been decided upon a long time ago. And so it's not so good to use them now as an excuse to stop once again uh, the autonomy reform. And this is an attempt to restart everything over without having a real reform. It's just a, a sort of uh, attempt to stop everything. And, uh, well, I go back to Mrs. Bellini. Well, sorry, the, I don't want to be controversial, so the Communist Party is not there, I mean, any longer. And those who know the, 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 the story of the local authorities in this country know that this is not, I mean, a list of scores. It's simply about the fact of uh, claiming, I mean, uh, more strength for local areas. I don't want to, to quarrel. I don't want to uh, sort of have a debate on this now, but I think that nothing will be decided. 
and uh, you have so many uh, deputies and senators, more than 60% of representatives in the parliament. So you can self-vote anything you want. So maybe we should ask ourselves a couple of questions about the reason why there is a certain sort of detachment towards uh, differentiated autonomy by some uh, people representing the majority. So this is something that would be new for this country. And of course, we need to do it right. In my opinion, the wrong way was taken because, well, there is a desire to impose a solution when instead we had been very clear about the key requirements and uh, uh, if I had the time, uh, I would explain to you how we could, uh, uh, how, I mean, uh, energy would be poorly managed uh, by each region. Well, I don't want to blame anybody. I'm simply talking about the content. President Federica, considering this exchange, is there a risk that this becomes a never ending story? Well, I should be unbiased, but I want to say that when the discussion about the Calderoli reform started, first of all, we got a first informal draft at the uh, Conference of the Regions, and so we unanimously decided to submit eight questions, and uh, all of the f eight questions have been introduced in the final text, and then, of course, so it's not true that there has been no discussion with us. And so unanimously, the conference in the region asked for eight things, and these eight item, items have been integrated in the draft. This is important to be said. Secondly, I am worried that if the citizen rights through the essential levels of services are applied only if the differentiated autonomy are implemented, well, that would concern me and worry me. So again, now the case is that they are provided for regardless of the differentiated autonomy. And somebody says that we have not enough resources, but what is worse that maybe no resources have been invested so far to guarantee minimum rights to citizens. So if, with the, if we, use uh, key citizen rights to say no to differentiate the economy, well, this is extremely serious. Well, I think they should not be used as a sort of hostage, as a sort of argument. That's why, as public officers and public administrators, we should first try to see which are the rights that we can guarantee and that we can provide. So there is no risk of a barter exchange, but all the draft and everything that has been discussed with the different Conte governments, but not with Draghi because with him there was no discussion. Well, all regions, including Emilia Romagna, said that we would like to have additional functions in full compliance with the essential levels of services, and that has been written down. But because this, this is the way it has to be done because these are essential service levels. So again, what is done in the healthcare sector is really about essential levels. And this is also an important parameter to assess the efficiency of the regions. So because of that, I mean, many regions performance were sort of analyzed. So. 97% is reached by Emilia Romagna, the essential uh, levels of services. And then the regions from the south reach 50%, 45%, and so on. But they can measure their performances according to this benchmark. If we manage to do that uh, over the time, we can't do uh, everything immediately, possibly. 
So much will have to be done to achieve a solution which is very similar to what has been done for healthcare, whereby there is a national healthcare fund, the regions. Uh, and this is divided uh, among the regions uh, according to an agreement uh, that is done uh, with the central government. So, if uh, in the welfare state, if in uh, education and uh, in uh, employment where we need uh, significant investments uh, to uh, uh, ensure uh, uh, the right to, to employment. We all know that the right to employment is not the right to a job, but the citizens, uh, the unemployed, must be helped uh, to uh, re qualify, uh, uh, upskill, and re skill. Let's think about vocational training, for example. Uh, this is enormous need for Italy, uh, given the large number of needs in our country who are not working uh, and either studying. Emilia Romagna is doing a lot on vocational training and has always asked to be able to decide how to organize vocational training together with the companies. So some things have to be done and I'm very pragmatic on that. We have models to establish the essential level of services. Let's try and work together. It's going to be a long-term process where resources are going to be given year by year, but we have to start from somewhere. And healthcare is a good example to start. So we still have 10 minutes left. I'm going to give three minutes to each president for his final remarks. Because next year, we are going to be here once again to speak about it. President Fontana, let's start from you. I believe that uh, next year, we can come back here to talk about uh, how the law approved uh, by the parliament uh, has been implemented, Calderoli uh, law, I, I mean. Uh, I think that this, uh, the essential level of services will be implemented. I think that uh, uh, we will be able to start. Then there's going to be the next phase, which is going to be quite long. I totally agree on the fact that uh, uh, it would be impossible to um, uh, have uh, uh, all the 10 different topics uh, under the responsibility of the regions. But even if uh, one out of, ten, out of 10 is going to be uh, under the responsibility of the regions, uh, some results will have been achieved. Let me give you one example, healthcare. If we had the possibility, for example, that the resources are not established by the state, there are some resources that could be spent on a different topic. If we had the possibility to decide whether we could give some more money, for example, to general practitioners who have to go and work in remote areas. If we had the possibility uh, to uh, uh, regulate the relations with general practitioners directly, there would be many opportunities that could improve our health care. And this is just one topic. Bonaccini said that very well beforehand. During the COVID, during the tragedy of the COVID, uh, we had to decide about the decisions for reopening. The central governing government was making some proposals, but uh, they were so strict that we could have never reopened. At 3 o'clock at night, the Conference of the Regions decided, OK, let's make the rules ourselves. We met. Our technicians worked for two days. After two days, we approved the rules. They were sent to the central government, and they were implemented. And therefore, uh, Italy reopened once again and uh, overcame the COVID emergency. 
So this shows that the choices made by the regions will better know the needs uh, at a local level uh, can just improve. So long live the autonomy. Thank you, President Fontana. Bodaccini, the floor is yours. A government that wants to introduce autonomy and then manages uh, the flooding emergency uh, from uh, this at the central level has never been seen before. It's unprecedented. And this is a major problem. I want to say something on uh, health care. In my opinion, we will come to an end and uh, there is not going to be a balance in Italy because before being from this region, I am Italian. I believe that uh, we are not on the right track. By giving more autonomy to uh, uh, some regions, others uh, will not have more resources to bridge the gap. Following up to what President Fondana said, when talking about uh, uh, autonomy, then we go to Minister Schillaci. Uh, Massimiliano Fedriga uh, worked uh, a, a lot on that uh, in uh, asking some requests. The minister, uh, a few days after meeting us, uh, said the government that uh, four billion euro were needed, but nothing will come. After uh, uh, many years, uh, the uh, uh, ratio between the Italian GDP and the uh, uh, Italian expenditure uh, is very high. This way, uh, the uh, quality regions uh, will also lower their performances. I'm not interested in the fact that Emilia Romagna ranks among the first in the um, essential level of services. When this ranking came out, uh, I could boast myself. I could say, OK, we are the first ones. But in Rimini, for example, in Bologna or Piacenza, and if I ask the citizens of my region, ah, oh, you know that we uh, rank first uh, in terms of quality and quantity of essential level of services, and I'm asking them, uh, is the public health care improving or worsening in Emilia-Romagna? 95% of them would tell me it is worsening because we have very few resources. 15 regions are in red. So three-fourths of the Italian regions are in red. So the problem is not the quality of those who manage the country, but there is a structural problem among those who are managing the country. Then we have a problem in terms of staff. Until a few years ago, we were making public tenders, and we couldn't provide long-term employment. Um, to the candidates of those public tenders. Now we cannot find the enough uh, nurses. So uh, there is a problem here. It means uh, that uh, we are always working in emergency. We have to make decisions. We have to increase the salaries, wages, because uh, as Fontana said, otherwise we risk not having the staff. To conclude, every year there is a decrease in the number of doctors. So, should we still keep the numerous clauses system at university for uh, uh, the uh, uh, medical faculty for uh, 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 medical school? Otherwise, uh, if we don't have enough uh, number of nurses or enough number of doctors, uh, health care uh, will continue to worsen in Italy. And now let's go back to President Federica. So uh, uh, different problems in terms of health care have been raised, but these problems uh, are the result of uh, a lack of planning for 20 years. 
and I do apologize. I tried to be very institutional, but you cannot blame a government for that if it has been managing the country just for nine months. This government, uh, in the, uh, the, the Draghi's government, uh, has uh, had uh, increased uh, funds uh, year by year in the uh, financial law. It uh, step by step increased the funds allocated to the healthcare. This government has increased this increase. Uh, these funds are not enough for healthcare, but uh, the idea was that. Uh, uh, the funds for health care uh, have been increased in absolute terms. In the Conference of the Regions, uh, together with the Ministry for University and Research, uh, we have increased by 30 uh, percent access to scientific faculties. The numerous clauses system has not been uh, um, taken away, has not been erased, because there can not be an infinite number of students uh, in the faculties uh, because uh, there are some res th there are some constraints uh, th there are constraints in terms of number of people that we can train otherwise maybe we risk not training people properly so from september this year we have uh, increased uh, by 30% uh, the um, uh, number of students that can have access to um, scientific faculties, even though this is not enough. The problem is the appropriateness of prescriptions. And this is a big risk. I know that uh, I don't want to have an applause because otherwise I should say everyone should have everything, but I think that we have to be serious and we have to uh, tell what the situation is, what the problem is. There is a problem of access to first aid. In my region, for example, there is a 70% 70% of people who come to first aid, even if the situation is not serious. It means that they come to first aid because there's not enough general practitioners. I know that this problem cannot be solved overnight, but this is the situation. I don't want to say, and I'm saying that during the electoral campaign and before the electoral campaign, that we have to tell the citizens what the situation is really like, what we can do to solve the situations, what problems have to be solved in the long term, and what are those problems that cannot be solved. Because first and foremost, we need to be honest enough to citizens to tell the truth, and not just simply making promises that cannot be respected. OK, we are now coming to an end. OK. We'll stop here, and maybe next year we'll come back here again for the umpteenth time in order to understand what has happened over the past 12 months. As you have seen, uh, uh, you have made a wonderful debate, a wonderful debate on a topic that is not very simple. So thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. On behalf of the Rimini meeting, I want to remind you that the Rimini is made of the work of thousands of people and volunteers, so I remind you that in the fair you can find the uh, Dona Ora Donate Now desks where you can give your contribution for the organization of next year's meeting. Goodbye to uh, 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 Lorenzo Violini, Attilio Fontana, Massimiliano Federica, and Stefano Bonaccini. Thank you very much for your contributions. Uh, uh, good goodbye.
la civiltà dell'amore. Fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. religioso o l'esperienza religiosa è innanzitutto un fatto, un fenomeno obiettivo, un fatto reale, non è un'idea, innanzitutto non è un modo di sentire, non solo si tratta di un fatto, di un avvenimento, ma del fatto più imponente e più inestirpabile della storia dell'uomo più imponente più vasto che neanche il fenomeno dell'amore dell'uomo e della donna che neanche il fenomeno del rapporto tra genitori e figli perché il senso religioso è un avvenimento che pone, che afferma o che ricerca l'orizzonte entro il quale acquisti senso anche il rapporto tra l'uomo e la donna, anche il rapporto tra genitori e figli. Perciò è più vasto, perfino di quelli. Quello che ti serve, quando ti serve. Come il piano Easy Smart a canone zero, anziché a 3,90 euro al mese. Easy Bank, semplicemente banca. In Lombardia c'è tanto da scoprire. Vai su illombardia.it e scoprila tutta. Vi abbiamo visto cambiare e siamo cambiati insieme a voi. E anche quest'estate sarà come tutte le altre. C'eravamo quando vi siete incontrati per la prima volta. Vi abbiamo visto gioire, tuffarvi, sognare grandi imprese e apprezzare piccole cose. C'eravamo e ci saremo, oggi come allora. Perché una cosa non cambierà mai, la Romagna è la vacanza degli italiani.
Dia l'energia giusta, sceglie di non sprecarla. serve quando ti serve. Nasce Easy Bank, la nuova banca digitale di Intesa San Paolo. Easy Bank, semplicemente banca.